Hi hey YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find us on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Uh, here's another installment in the knife sharpening series. Um, today I'm going to tune up my three everyday carry knives um, and walk you through the process uh, not only of actually sharpening, which is the easy part, but deciding how to sharpen them, which is the part that requires a little bit more thought and the biggest reason why I believe that the perfect edge can only be uh, achieved by the person who's using the knife, by them sharpening it. You know, if, uh, if you have somebody else sharpen a knife for you, yeah, it can get sharp, but it won't be the perfect edge for uh, the person that's going to be using the knife. So anyway, so I'll show you the setup right quick. We have got a Norton... Uh, combination oil stone, some mineral oil, Sharpie, one of the big ones, uh, the DMT, let's get you around here, there's a glare there, but that's the DMT 325 continuous uh, surface uh, sharpening hone, my three everyday carry knives, a Vic Victor Inox Tinker, uh, and I don't know what steel that one's made of. It doesn't uh, doesn't say what what steel the the blade's made out of. A Benchmade 940 Osborne in S30V, and my uh, my current everyday carry belt knife, which is one of my Carter Pattern Neckers in 440C stainless, and I think that's bird's eye maple for the handle. Got a couple of pencils to show you. Um, what it is that we're going to be doing to the the edges. Okay, so the first thing to do is we're going to go over the classes of knives. Okay, my uh, my belt knife, and I've just got this. Um, uh, this is a necker, but um, I most of the time carry it just. Uh, uh, just on my belt uh, instead of around my neck unless I'm doing something like kayaking or something where it's tough to get to my hips so this knife right here is mostly a rough use type of knife for mm, rough use type of knife for the three knives that I carry every day um, I wouldn't go you know prying open painted uh, shut windows with this knife or opening cans with it or anything like that but you know it's the knife that I'm going to reach for the most when I need you know just kind of an everyday uh, a work type of knife anyway so um, you can see the blade is all scratched up this knife gets used pretty hard every single day and what I've been using it for lately is uh, let's see I uh, I was getting a, a house ready to paint, and so I was using this knife to uh, uh, clean up nail holes, you know, do a little circle around the holes after I pulled the nails off, uh, you know, to, to bevel them out so that the spackling would fill in there well. Um, I think I was uh, I stripped apart an old air compressor that wasn't working right, so I was scraping some of the, some of the old gasket material off of the, the cylinder head with it. Um, you know, cutting hose and, you know, all that sort of stuff. So this knife, while I want it to be, you know, a good cutting edge, it'll have a little bit thicker of an edge than, uh, than one of my lighter use type knives. But still, this knife, if we go back to our pencil analogy, okay, this is a freshly sharpened pencil point. We've got nice clean lines going down to the point which is what I need to restore this knife to. This right here would be uh, an edge that had a very very blunt angle or had uh, started off with a nice lean geometry and then had just been sharpened at the same angle the whole time and is now too thick to to really be a good use. This pencil right here is about what that knife edge looks like right now. We've got sloping sides from the last time that I completely reshaped it, but as I've come in and just touched it up and touched it up and touched it up, you can see that point is kind of blunt. So, 
what we're going to do is we're going to take the magic marker and we're going to run a line on the edge bevels. Do that on both sides so that we can see what we're doing when we start rubbing it on the stone. Now, here is where I differ a little bit when I'm sharpening knives. Okay, when I'm sharpening my personal knives, pretty much if I'm not getting low enough on the stone to scratch the finish, then I'm not getting a thin enough edge. Okay, now when I sharpen knives uh, for sale, um, I do a little bit different because a lot of people like to have a nice looking finish. So when I finish out a knife and sharpen it, I try to get just low enough to where there might be one or two scratches on just starting up into the, the blade bevels from the edge bevels. And that, that's, that would be perfect. So if you received a knife from me and it had, you know, that what I just finished, and it had maybe one or two or ten, you know, little bitty scratches just coming up into the blade bevels, that would be perfect. Because that leaves you with a nice looking finish with the little scratch marks that says, hey, this knife was hand sharpened. It never, you know, it wasn't sharpened on a machine or anything, which gives you that, uh, you know, that personal type touch. Um, and yet it's still, you know, it gives you a good, good working edge. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to reshape this edge. Okay, I'm not too concerned with the, the apex of the edge. I just want to get the shoulders. I want to get these shoulders moved back a little bit. Okay, so to reshape that, I'm going to use the coarse side of my Norton stone with a little bit of mineral oil on it and pretty much just go to town. Now when I sharpen, I even when I'm paying attention to it, coming back is almost always a little bit lower than going forwards. It's uh, just the way I sharpen and like I said, even, I have to be paying real close attention and really concentrating to get them completely even, but it doesn't really seem to make that much difference. So we're gonna go on one side put the stone or the blade flat down on the stone and then raise it up just a little bit until I can feel where that edge bevel is and then pretty much just go to town. You can do circular movements, you can go back and forth. Now when I'm coming, I'm coming down and then off to be able to get to the point. You can just stay in one section for a while and then move to another section or you can do nice smooth movements or like I said, some people do circles. You know, pretty much whatever uh, whatever movement feels good to you that you can maintain a mostly consistent angle. And then I want to make sure I get up uh, get up in the um, the plunge line because that's usually a part that uh, that doesn't get sharpened as well. And then I usually like to finish up with a couple of nice smooth strokes along the entire length of the, the edge. Okay, now you probably won't be able to see it all, the, all that well, but you can see all the marker is rubbed off. But that bevel has been thinned out considerably. On this side right here, we are much closer to having this than this. Now I'll go back to the other side. Just looking to see if I see any of that, that marker at all. Now I go back to this side and I do the same thing. Get up in the plunge line there real good, up around the point.
And like I said, at this point, I'm not really all that uh, concerned with, you know, keeping an exact angle. I just want to keep it kind of close. Okay. So now that side, this bevel looks nice and clean. It's been pushed back a little bit so that, uh, you know, I restore those nice, um, you know, flat edge bevels. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for my burr. Okay. And I'll just sharpen on one side until I feel the burr consistently all along the edge on the opposite side and then come to a burr on the other side and then that lets me know that my shaping is done. You could also, once you get to this point, you could also switch to the diamond home or your, your finer stone if that's what you wanted to do. I'm also looking down at the edge to see where, where it's reflecting light inspecting the point making sure I got that shaped well enough and now I'm lightening up considerably on my pressure because I've got the bulk of the material off of that edge removed that I wanted removed Now we've got a burr from here to about here. And we've got a slight burr up in here, but we've got a flat spot right in right in there. There we go. Now we're good everywhere except for right here in the belly. And that took care of that. So now this edge is completely shaped. Okay. Now if you tried to cut something with it, it would, it would feel sharp until um, the burr uh, either folded over or broke off or you know otherwise deformed. So now what we need to do, and the, the edge is very, very coarse. Even though I like a pretty coarse edge, this edge is a bit too coarse for what I like. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to clean up the scratches from the shaping stone on the diamond hone and then this diamond hone is also going to give us the or give me the final edge that I want. Now I like to use water on these uh, for my personal use knives um, when I'm sharpening a knife for sale especially a high carbon steel knife I'll usually use them dry because that way I don't introduce moisture to the side of the blade and then um, you know have problems with discoloration uh, before it gets shipped to the customer. So we'll go ahead and start on the, the right hand side of the blade. Now we're doing quite a bit less pressure because all we're really doing is trying to refine that edge some. Get rid of the big coarse scratches. That feels pretty good on that side. Now we'll go to this side.
That's feeling pretty good. My tip feels good. Now we'll go ahead and start weakening that burr and then cut it off. So real nice light pressure now. Feel just a hint of that burr left. Okay, now we'll go ahead and shear the burr off. Now, you know, a lot of times uh, you'll see somebody stropping, like uh, an old time movie or something, see somebody stropping a knife on their hand or an old belt or a piece of wood or whatever as their final final stage in sharpening. What they're trying to do there is take that, that burr and bend it back and forth until it breaks off. Um, that leaves a very jagged edge um, that has nothing to do really with the the grit of stone that you used. Like I said, I like a toothy edge, but I want to be able to choose the tooth on that edge and not leave it up to be random. So I will shear the edge or shear the the burr off on the the stone. And to do that, you just take a couple of very light passes at an angle you know, twice, yeah, two, two and a half times what your sharpening angle was. And that will shear the burr off and leave you a micro bevel. Feel a little bit of that burr hanging on right up in there. There we go. I don't really feel any burr left. So we have the gratuitous arm shaving portion. And it's taken hair off the entire length of the edge. There's no dull spots. Another test is to see if it'll shave one or both ways. Because if you have a burr, if that burr is stood up on one side, it'll shave on one side of the blade but then it won't shave on the other side of the, or it'll shave in one direction, but it won't shave in the other direction. So now, uh, let's see, I've got six minutes left. We'll go ahead, I won't make you watch me sharpening these other two knives because, well, that's kind of boring, isn't it, watching somebody sharpen a knife? But we'll go over what I'm going to do with, with these two knives. Okay, this knife is, um, you know, nice folding knife you know I like the overall package and everything you can see that I did regrind it completely um, there's probably I'd say three sixteenths of an inch of the width of this blade that has been used up over the years I've carried this one for about five or six now I think so at one point I took the thumb stud out and went ahead and put the blade up on the belt grinder and completely reshaped the the edge bevels took it down to a near zero grind and then have been slowly working it back uh you know until it needs it again or until i send it off to get a new blade for it but this one has got a slight slight chip right there you probably won't be able you might see it right there it's got a slight chip or a little bit of damage there the point is a little bit on the dull side i probably used it as a screwdriver one time or another um, so pretty much this one's just going to get reshaped again at about the same angle. You know, um, most of my knives, they, uh, you know, I know them pretty well, especially these three. So that angle has, uh, is doing a pretty good job because mostly what I use this knife for is, uh, you know, opening mail or, um, you know, cutting string or whatever, uh, just kind of a lighter, uh, 
a lighter duty full size type of knife than what you know my belt knife does, sees and then this knife right here the Victor and Knox Tinker it's got two blades and it also has two more cutting edges which are the tweezers now the tweezers they work pretty good as they come from the factory but I find if you sharpen the the ends of the tweezers boy they work way better for pulling splinters out and um, you know anything you use tweezers for so I'll go ahead and tune those up while I'm here also now this steel is quite a bit softer but this is what I consider a very light use type knife I've reshaped this blade right here um, to make it a little bit easier to whittle things you know whittling whimsies or pencils or whatever with and then this blade I usually kind of beat the crap out of it because uh, um, you know it's kind of a, a spare really I mean most of my cutting tasks are, are taken care of with the other two knives but this thing I carry it almost more for the uh, for the extra tools on it than I do for the knives you know those come in really really handy and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room in the pocket so um, so this is more of a um, multi-tool um, as far as I'm concerned or a very very light very fine edge knife this blade right here especially you can see how how wide those edge bevels are this works really good for uh, cutting splinters out and, and really detail type work and so pretty much I'll thin this out just a little bit more and then um, you know finish tuning it up and it'll be ready to go for another I don't know, a couple weeks, month, it just kind of depends on how much I use it. But anyway, as you're sharpening your knife, always be asking yourself, hey, you can see on this one, as an example, this one's got a little bit of a chip here and the tip is a little bit uh, deformed. Okay, well, if you're not getting that kind of, if you're not getting any edge damage at all, it's just slowly going dull, then that means you could get a little bit thinner when you're sharpening it. Or, um, you know, maybe you want to have that really thick, robust edge that doesn't cut quite as well as a thinner edge, but you don't have to worry about it so much. Those are the things um, that really make a big difference when you're sharpening your own knife, that if you sent the knife to somebody else or had a buddy sharpen, he wouldn't know what you used that knife for the past week, what you have plans to use that knife for the next week, and how you normally use the knife. You know, he would just sharpen it at, say, a 20 degree angle. Well, what happens if an 18 degree angle is better? Of course, then again, can you hold two degrees freehand while you're sharpening? And then again, does that matter? Anyway, we're talking knives here. You know, they're, they're tools. You use them up um, and enjoy them. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the vid, and we'll see you next time.